morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. If you're watching us live on Facebook, thank you for that. want to remind folks that our Facebook page does keep these videos active. You can go back and watch them if you want to at your leisure anytime during the day. We do also upload these shows to www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. We have audio and video versions there for you to check out. They are free. Getting into your traffic this morning, uh, some heavier delays in and around the 10-12 split have traffic backed up past O'Neill this morning. So I-12 moving slow. It is moving, however. Uh, some on-ramp delays here in Livingston Parish, but nothing too bad. Looking at clear skies in 4-H Club Road, River Road, and 190. So look, moving pretty well there. Uh, good morning, Thiesel. Thanks for joining us. Uh, 64 looking clear heading into Central uh, with Greenville Springs looking relatively clear as well. However, uh, did get a little bit of a late start this morning. School traffic relatively low at this point. Still looking at some lingering traffic in and around uh, some of the larger high schools, including Live Oak on 16, Denham in 16, as well as Walker High School uh, with Burgess and 190 experiencing some delays. Good morning, Miss Dawn. Thanks for joining us. Your weather today, it's currently 60 degrees, 84 degrees is your high, 65 your overnight low. So not quite as chilly uh, overnight as it has been lately. Going to get a little warmer during the day too. So we're going to see that little, uh, as people like to call it, the second summer uh, where fall didn't quite last uh, forever. Uh, we're going to get the second summer and then we'll get fall back again. So uh, good morning, Mr. Mike. Thanks for joining us. So again, currently 60 degrees. 84 degrees is your high, 65 your overnight low. Hurricane Delta is a hurricane already. It is developing strength and moving at a northwesterly uh, direction, sort of heading towards the elbow in Texas. However, it is expected to take a northerly track and hit somewhere between Lake Charles and Pensacola. Now, of course, uh, you know, the water down where it is currently in the Caribbean heading towards the southern Gulf is warm. It is expected to intensify uh, over the coming, <clears throat> excuse me, over the coming days. It is expected to make landfall sometime around Friday evening. It's going to be interesting to see how much strength it gathers after moving into the Gulf. Reports are that that water in the northern Gulf is relatively cool. There is some wind shear as well. So while it may intensify even further, perhaps to a Category 3 or 4, there is sort of a buffer zone in the northern Gulf that may buy, uh, especially Louisiana, if it does hit us again, uh, or if it, another hurricane hitting us uh, might be able to weaken it a little bit before it makes that landfall. So keep your fingers crossed, but also be prepared. It is expected, again, to continue to intensify as it moves in a northwesterly direction into the Gulf. It is expected to take a northern turn. Uh, so we are right smack in the middle. That would be Louisiana and really here in Livingston Parish, kind of right smack in the middle of that uncertainty cone. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that. I just realized my, whoa, huh. just realized my camera did something different. Sorry about that, folks. Um, President Trump has returned to the White House after spending uh, several days at Walter Reed Hospital. Uh, he does say that he is feeling better. However, uh, the president not in the clear just yet. Uh, several uh, several hurdles still to cross, and of course, it, according to doctors, uh, possibly still contagious. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, especially as more and more people uh, have been declared uh, contagious or have uh, tested positive for COVID nineteen in the White House over the past few days. So a lot going on at the White House right now. Uh, kind of a rough scene in terms of COVID-19 as they try to get back on track, especially heading towards uh, potential negotiations for another stimulus bill, which are on and off, as well as the election on November 3rd. Speaking of that election, early voting is set in Louisiana. You're looking at October 16th through 27th. Uh, the library at uh, Denham Springs Walker Branch will be open, as well as the Registrar of Voters Office will be open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. all of those days except Sunday. So you start on the 16th, which is a Friday, Saturday the 17th, Sunday the 18th, not open. Uh, so do not go try to early vote on Sunday the 18th, please. That, would, uh, that won't work out for you. So again, early voting open, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. October 16th through 27th, 
at the Denham Springs Walker Branch Library, as well as the Registrar of Voters Office. Registrar of Voters Jared Andrew expects anywhere from 2,000 to 2,500 people per day uh, at the Denham Springs Walker Branch Library, and anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 at the Registrar of Voters Office as an average. Uh, some days might be more busy than other, others. One of the things he does ask is that individuals go to the Go Vote app, take a look at what would be on your ballot. We do also have that ballot attached to the story on our website about early voting. Lots of people are going to have some packed ballots, especially in the town of Livingston. So if you're voting early in the town of Livingston, uh, make sure you keep uh, have a pretty good idea of what you're going to be voting for heading in. We'll be talking about uh, the constitutional amendments, which are on the ballot uh, later in the week. But we will have you prepared. This Thursday's edition is going to be the election edition. We're going to have you prepared to go vote starting next week. Getting into your COVID-19 statistics today, 168,512 total cases, 5,396 deaths, 2,389,575 tests. There are 154,163 who have recovered. 547 are hospitalized on 71 ventilators. In Livingston Parish, 3,855 cases, excuse me, 76 deaths on 41,400 tests. There is a battle that continues to rage at the Louisiana legislature as they enter the special session, which itself lasts until roughly October 27th. The legislature had to call the special session in an effort to try to determine where the economy is going to be and how much revenue the state's going to have to try to formulate a budget for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. They did pass one in July, but of course, or late June, but of course that is somewhat problematic because at that time there were still a lot of unknowns and a lot of unexpected uh, issues with the economy uh, with regard to COVID-19. So they called another special session. Part of what they're doing during, doing during this session is trying to, uh, I guess you can say, reel in uh, the governor in terms of his uh, uh, emergency declaration and the extensions of the COVID-19 emergency declarations. Good morning, Ms. Barber. Thanks for joining us. There are a lot of different uh, concurrent resolutions going on. Right now, the ones that seem to have the most traction uh, are one proposed by Senate President Paige Cortez, which would form uh, a new group uh, that would include certain legislatures, legislators that would have a seat at the table when the governor is uh, receiving his information and making a decision as to whether or not to extend um, any phase or any kind of restrictions and mandates that includes masks. The other is proposed or co-sponsored by the House Speaker Clay Schecksneider, who represents the southern portion of Livingston Parish. That would suspend for 30 days all of the mitigation efforts. So that would be uh, mandated masks, uh, capacity limits, that sort of thing for 30 days after the session is over. And the purpose of that would be to see just what would happen uh, if, uh, I guess you can say, certain restrictions were removed. One thing uh, that both parties have been warned about is suspension of that emergency declaration could cost the state money in the future as well as uh, cause problems if there is another outbreak of COVID-19. So kind of keep an eye on that, see where that's going. But it, the newest to come out of committee uh, would be uh, Senate, or excuse me, House Concurrent Resolution Number 13. This would suspend the fire marshal's ability to enforce these mandates and mitigation efforts until June of next year. Uh, it's proposed by uh, Republican Blake Miguez. And the idea, I guess, is to just uh, try to, to curb the ability to not be able to enforce things like mask mandates and capacity limits. Uh, this is coming out of committee. Again, it, it's going to have to go into the House. So far, none of these measures have received uh, enough votes to be veto-proof. Uh, so the governor still is going to reserve that right at this time. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when some of these uh, maybe make it out of uh, the House and Senate and hit his desk, which ones he'll sign and which ones he won't. Time will tell, but the newest one we just mentioned, which is uh, House Concurrent Resolution Number 13, that would suspend the fire marshal's ability uh, to enforce mandates, uh, including masks and capacity limits, 
on businesses until next June. So we're gonna we'll see where that goes as it goes through the process. Livingston Parish Public Schools had been giving a weekly update for their COVID-19 uh, cases and statistics. That is now being moved to bi-weekly or every other week, according to Superintendent Joe Murphy. Uh, he kind of feels like the schools are getting back to normal. Uh, they haven't had a whole lot of problems as of yet. Anybody that has tested positive, they have kind of contact traced in that group, gotten people to stay home, have kept things mostly under control so far. So they are going to move to a bi-weekly report on those COVID-19 statistics. And getting into your mitigation efforts real quick, remember to wash your hands for, with soap and water for 20 seconds or more. Wear a mask in public. It is a mandate. Six feet or more of distance between yourself and others. Control your cough and sneezing with an elbow or a tissue, preferably your own elbow. Don't touch your face, my favorite one. 50 or less to a gathering, preferably less. And stay home if you're sick and utilize telehealth to get in touch with your doctor. Want to remind folks there are heavy delays on I-12 uh, starting at the 1012 split, uh, backed up to roughly O'Neill. On ramp delays in Livingston Parish, so keep that in mind. Good morning, Miss Karen. Uh, thanks for joining us. Although we are wrapping up the show, 4H Club Road River Road M190 experiencing some delays now because of that traffic on I-12. 64 is clear heading into Central. School traffic just about done here at the eight o'clock hour. It's currently 61 degrees. 84 degrees is your high today, 65 your overnight low, so we are going to see a warming trend uh, over the next couple of days. It's still going to get kind of chilly at night, but not quite as cold as it was. It's going to get a little warmer during the day. want to remind folks, please be prepared for Hurricane Delta, already at 100 mile per hour sustained winds there in the northern Caribbean, expected to pass into the Gulf today. It is expected to continue to intensify, however, there is colder water uh, and some wind shear in the northern Gulf that may provide some reprieve wherever it goes. Right now, the cone of uncertainty for Hurricane Delta is anywhere from Lake Charles to Pensacola, so quite a quite a, uh, a big distance there. So we are going to see where that storm eventually ends. Uh, the picture will become more clear as the week moves on, but uh, local officials and state officials do recommend that you get prepared now as the storm continue, is expected to make a northern push and and it is expected to strike Louisiana at this time, although, again, the cone has it from Lake Charles to Pensacola. One last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning for the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. want to remind you guys that we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We have a podcast page, which is free, where we have audio and video versions of the show. We do have a breaking news page, which is state news, national news, arrests, and uh, accidents. That is free as well. We also have a coronavirus page where we're trying to keep you updated with all the latest coronavirus information as we move forward. We do hope you have a great day. It's supposed to be a beautiful one for the rest of the week. Please remember to get prepared for Hurricane Delta, and we will see you tomorrow morning.